Hi everyone, welcome to the Wix Engineering Tech Talks show. I'm Guy, a developer at Wix, and I'm going to talk with you about meaningful code review. But first, let me start with a question. Why should we even do code reviews? Now, let me take an educated guess here. Some of you think a better code base, avoid bugs, teach new employees. But what about learn and getting better writing code? If this is the reason you were thinking about, you came to the right place. Keep watching. Now, if you are doing code reviews where you work right now, you are probably doing code reviews by pull requests, right? Someone pushes the code, making a pull request of it, someone else enters GitHub, going over the code, leave comments, and the author should fix them. Does it achieve learn and get better writing code? No, I don't think so. What about face-to-face -face code reviews, like some kind of an approval process? It depends how you do it. And in this short video, I'm going to talk with you about how to do it in a meaningful code review way. In this short video, I'm going to start with few rules that should apply on every code review that you do. After that, I'm going to talk with you about the process, how a code review should be done. And last, I'm going to show with you some tips that we have learned over the time practicing this meaningful code review way. Now let's start with the rules. First I would like you to see, this is a photograph during a code review. Who do you think wrote the code? The author sits behind while the reviewer takes the keyboard and going over the files and the code and leaves his comments. And this brings us to the first rule. The author should be as quiet as possible. Why, you ask? Well, imagine this. You are doing a code review to someone, you are watching at a piece of code, you don't understand it, and then the author starts telling you what this code is about. How can we tell that this code is readable after this happens? This is why the author should only answer questions. Never bring up information you weren't asked for. Rule number two, author choose reviewer, not the other way around. We want the author to feel as comfortable as he can during the code review. This is why it's his choice to start it and who will review it. Rule number three, start only with green build. Nothing is more frustrating than finish a code review and figure out that this code doesn't even compile, okay? Rule number four, never say you. Say we instead, as in, we usually do it that way and not you should have done it that way. Because you might make the author be defensive. It's like you are blaming him when you're saying you instead of we. Okay guys, that's enough about the rules. Now let's talk about the process. How a meaningful code review should be like. Every code review divides to two stages. The first one is the shallow stage. It's quick, precise, we're cleaning up code first before even starting talking about the code. We're just sweeping through it, deleting stuff that the linter might have missed. I'm talking about stuff like that. A console log the developer forgot. A line that is too long. And we can easily break it apart, make it shorter and more readable. The second stage is the deep stage. It's a longer process. It's philosophical and it's essential for a meaningful code review. Now let's focus some topics we want to focus in the deep stage. First, test coverage. Have we done enough testing this code? A good way to test it is delete a production code and see if a test fails. If a test fails, it's all good. But if not, it means that something important hasn't been tested. It's enough to show it to the author so we can add the test later. Readability. If the reviewer can't understand a piece of code, it might not be readable. Think about it and think how you can make this piece of code more readable. Best practices. It doesn't mean that the author has to change the code for every comment by the reviewer. Some comments are to share knowledge and have a better learning experience during the code review. Because the deep stage is philosophical and might take a lot of time, here are two very good tips to avoid wasting time during you do it. As a reviewer, your arguments should be practical. It's not good enough to give some kind of a theory, explanation you thought about without any solid example that can make the author change his code. It's nice talking about these theories and learn from it, but it shouldn't trigger an action items and cause the author to change his code. Remember, if the deep stage ended and no code has been changed, you are probably doing something wrong. Take a step back and think about it. 
the first tip and the most important one. Authors should know that when they are coming to a code review, their code is going to be changed. Come mentally prepared to change your code. Sometimes authors have what I call code ego. They are coming to a code review thinking that their code is the best code ever written and they will never change it no matter what the reviewer said. It's not good, it's bad for you and your team. Come to the code review knowing that this code is going to be changed. Know it. The second tip, reviewers, even if you are a junior code reviewing the most senior guy in your company and you see that something is wrong, you should say something. Even if the senior have 10 years more than you in this company, it doesn't say that you don't have a valuable comment to give him. Don't be shy and always say what you have to say. The third rule is for authors. As I said in the rule section, authors get to choose his reviewer. But it doesn't mean that you should abuse it and always choose the same reviewer you feel comfortable with. You should be diverse and choose different reviewers in order to get better and learn from everyone something you didn't know before. The last tip is for authors. The fact that you have done a code review doesn't mean that now the reviewer have the burden of the responsibility of your code. It's still the code you wrote. Now, I'm sure that if you are watching this video, you are not that kind of guy that will take the responsibility of his code and put on someone else, but just in case, remember, you wrote the code and the responsibility is only on you, not the reviewer. One last thing guys I want you to remember. Your team is as strong as your weakest reviewer. Because when a reviewer slacks off, the entire team can use him to push low quality code. So be responsible and do meaningful code reviews in your team in order to have the best code base and have the best learned experience inside your team. Thank you for watching me. Feel free to leave comments below about what do you think of this meaningful code reviews process. See you in the next episode.